Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're all doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Leicester in the FA Community Shield, which is our first time playing in this competition. And it's also the first of potentially five trophies we could win this season. The Community Shield, the Premier League, the FA Cup, the League Cup and the Champions League. There's five trophies on the line this season. I'd love to win all five of them. Likelihood is we won't, but still, we're going to give it a good shot. So, number one of five today. As I record this right now, it's half past four in the UK right now. I've just finished work for the day, and I've got the FM streamer showdown draft coming up later on. I'm telling you this, though, because, one, I've not seen the comments from yesterday's video transfer special because it's not actually been uploaded yet because it's before eight o'clock. So, not quite sure what you guys have made of a transfer window. It was really frustrating and we've not made any subsequent signings just yet, but that might change in today's episode. And two, um, I'm not going to show you the FM Streamer Showdown team that we drafted for this weekend, but I've not done the draft yet as I record it, so I can't show you. I'll show you in tomorrow's video ahead of the tournament this weekend. Last thing for me to say is, the last thing for me to say is to make sure you do drop a like on the video and subscribe if you are new around here. So, transfers. Obviously, we've only made the uh, the two transfers so far this season. Gallardo's come in. This really annoys me how we signed, obviously down here, Sal Martinez this transfer window, but it counts as last season's transfer still. I don't like that, but obviously Sal Martinez and uh, Gallardo came in as a CDM and a keeper, as a backup keeper. I have been searching and searching and searching for keepers who would be available to join us. And to be fair, you know, there's a couple who would be interested in signing for us. I've got it on doubtful right now. Um, and that Arsenal keeper is doubtful. Uh, there's a few other keepers as well who are probably a little doubtful to joining us. If we sort it by transfer value though, like all the good ones are either way out of our price range or just don't want to join us. I just don't think we're going to find a keeper as good or better than Mantle right now. It's just not happening. And there's something kind of similar on the left back front as well. I mean, we are finding left backs and there's more and more who are interested in maybe signing for us. Javier Munoz, for example, uh, is an example of that. But again, £180,000 a week will cost us between 60 and £75 million. But if we do compare him with Ryan Aitnuri, this is the sort of player who defensively is a lot better but offensively is not as good. And we can't, I quite like Rayanet Nuri. He actually is solid, to be fair. So, if I can find down here, Valdo. I think today I want to just sign a left-back to have a backup. And Valdo might be the man to do it. Because actually, if we compare him with, if I can find him on this list somewhere, Rayanet Nuri, he's obviously not as good because he's 18 years old. But, you know, potential-wise... Not that far. Obviously not as good going forward, but defensively, physically, in the air better. You know, it's not actually that far off. And for £10 million for a backup left back, I feel like it seems reasonable to try and get this guy in for his release fee clause of £10.75 million. So let's make the offer, get him in, and then we actually will have a backup left back properly, not just have to use Hector Garcia. And the contract looks to be really small as well, which is fantastic for us. So let's just literally give him exactly what he wants pretty much maybe 10 grand a week to make way for getting rid of all those bonuses four-year deal he wants three let's say four he's happy with that excellent so that might end up being all it is actually i must say for this transfer window which i know is not very exciting at all but we just can't seem to find the players my thinking is maybe we save the money for january there might be a few players available in january who aren't available right now who might want to join us but my main thinking is that actually next summer is the prime time. One, we'll have all the Champions League money to spend on players. And two, we'll have an increased reputation from the Champions League. And three, I'd, more players might be available. I'm kind of thinking next summer is probably the big push we have to bring in some absolutely world-class players. Also, we can't quite get rid of uh, Lavia just yet, but Mines and Palace are both talking contracts to him for 20 million. I'm very upset we've not been able to get the 35 that we we're looking at yesterday, but it's just the way it seems to have happened. Oh, why won't he just leave the club? He's rejected Palace and Mines to stay with Wrexham. You're very much not wanted, Lavia. Very much not wanted. Anyway, let's shift our focus to this Leicester game and the first of five potential trophies we could win this season. I know full well that the Community Shield is a bit of a Mickey Mouse competition. It's just like a, no one cares about it, essentially. It's not really very important, but it is silverware and it's something 
that I'd like us to win. So I'm taking this game very seriously. At Leicester might field a slightly rotated lineup. They might treat it as a friendly. I'm not. I'm treating it as a cup final. And as such, we're going to put out our first choice team for it. Now, heading into this game, we currently have a few players on international duty. Aries Kamara is currently with the Portugal under-23s at the Olympic Games, which is very good for him. Although, Aries Kamara, how old is he? Oh, he's only 21, to be fair. That's fair enough. That's He can play there. Cohen Spiegel currently on international duty with the German under-23 squad. But there's also another player on international duty with the German under-23 squad. Nico Mansell, the 32-year-old goalkeeper. Now, obviously, there must be a rule where they can have a couple of players, three players by looks of things, over the age of 23 in the team. And I'm pretty sure that is a rule for the Olympic, because I seem to remember like Ryan Giggs playing for the Great Britain team in the 2012 Olympics, stuff like that. But the fact they've gone for Nico Mantle has annoyed me a little bit, because of course, it means he's not available today, or probably for the start of the Premier League season either. So we are going to have to give a start to Gallardo today, our brand new keeper. So it's a, a good job we got him. And so Gallardo makes his debut for the club, but the back line is very much the same as it was last season. Eight Nuri, Luis Felipe, Arian B and Neto starting in it. Martinez obviously comes in to be our new CDM, but in front of him is a very familiar midfield three of Al Parslan, Paniotov and Daniel Patrick, with Nice and Pereira leading the line. So as kickoff is upon us here today for the Community Shield, this is going to be an interesting game. Obviously, we won the league last season. Leicester somehow in the end came second in the table after a poor end to the season for both Liverpool and Man United. As we clear two shots off the line there, I must say Leicester must feel very aggrieved for not getting a goal from that corner as Fafana puts a header over the bar from the corner there. Another corner for them now. Surely they're going to score one at some point over the bar. We are being very lucky so far in this first 20 minutes, but uh, Leicester can't quite get enough shots on target. As I was saying though, this is going to be a really great test for us for the upcoming season. Was last season just a fluke we win the league title, or are we able to beat the second best team in the league comfortably today? By looks at things right now, we've not seen a single highlight in our favour, and Leicester have had all of them. But from their nine shots so far this game, only three have been on target. And we've only had one shot, so maybe this does suggest it was a bit of a fluke last season. But the ball to Daniel Patrick's good, and the attempted chip oh, was nearly absolutely perfect. The keeper forced to make a decent save on the line there. The first real attempt we've seen from us as Paniotov can deliver a ball to the near post. Luis Felipe can't win it in the air, and Wrexham can come away with it. Will they have... A highlight, though. Or will we get a challenge in on Justin? Well, he's got to our penalty area. As Gordon out wide gets the ball to Springer Downs, who keeps it out wide with Gordon, who gets into the area. Anderson back to Kay. I feel like there's going to be a goal coming from this at some point. There has to be for Leicester at some point. The amount of chance they've had so far. Not just yet, though. As Frank Nice on the ball comes on a counter-attack. Can we now score at the other end of the pitch? No, because Frank Nice gives it away completely and that's the end of the highlight. What a what a pointless highlight that was in the end. But as we reach half-time, we are really down in this game. Three shots to Leicester's 11. They've been all over us. Thrash the arms, not good enough. Now, we've had a pretty decent pre-season, but we haven't really played many decent teams. We did a pre-season tour of America, played some MLS clubs, uh, and that didn't really go. Well, it went very well for us, but they're not great teams, I should say. We played a few affiliate clubs who aren't that good, to be fair. The only real test we had was a Barcelona friendly the week before this Leicester game, which we drew 2-2. But of course, I didn't do any of the friendlies. My assistant manager does them all for me. So maybe he does things differently. Maybe he's just better as a manager than me. Today, though, we need to get a break in this second half. We need to play better, and maybe that might mean a few tactical tweaks. Although Pereira shooting from distance, the £200 million valuation from Bayern Munich on him. Obviously, we didn't sell him in the end. I'm kind of regretting it still, but I've not really seen what you guys have said in the comment section. I think keeping him is the best idea, but £200 million could have really given us some ammunition for our war room in the transfer windows. But hopefully he's going to have a great season scoring 20, 30 goals. And if he does, then I think it was pretty decent to keep him. In the meantime, Neto coming forward towards Perea does get the ball eventually to Perea who just loses it. And that £200 million is looking even more appealing when he does things like that. 
But we've missed the opportunity to sell him now, haven't we? Because Bayern have not come back in for him since we rejected that £200 million bid. Instead, it's Leicester coming forward, but a great interception there from Arian B ensures that we hold on to possession in the 60th minute here. And can we actually do anything significant with it? Well, our parceling can find a ball to Pereira. We are... 1-0 up in this game. I was about to say, like, we are starting to see a few more darting runs in the second half. We didn't really see much of it in the first half. But maybe that's because Leicester contained us quite nicely. Potentially, I don't quite know. But still, we found our way through in this game eventually with one of those long balls to a darting player splitting the attack goal. And so, actually, in the second half, we have come back into things a little bit. Still behind in terms of shots and XG and... Uh, things like that in the match stats compared to Leicester. But we have taken the lead and with 20 minutes to go, I think it's time we got some poor performers off the pitch. And I'm, I hate to say it, but Paniotov on a 6.6 .6 is one of them. Vasco Susi on your come. Daniel Patrick's going to come off for Jez Finley. And then Luis Felipe will come off for Nopadon as well. Has he got a left foot Nopadon? Uh, no, he doesn't. So we'll swap him and Arian B over because Arian B does have a left foot. He does. And actually probably should start on the left-hand side of the defence anyway. Because I think he's got the best left foot. So I'll make amends to that one later on. Our parcelling though. Can't get the ball into the middle. I think this highlight is just going to be for the tactical changes. But we'll see what happens. As Luis Felipe into our parcelling. Into Martinez. Some nice passing around. Like we keep hold of possession well. And we're very patient in our build-up. As Paniotov who's about to be subbed off. Nearly scored a superb goal, putting that one just over the bar. So subs have now happened. 72 minutes on the clock. Hopefully now we just sort of see the game out. But whew, that was a risky header from Arian B there. Back to Gallardo, who's impressed me on his debut today, to be fair. Kept a clean sheet so far under some heavy pressure from the Leicester attack. I've said that now. Watch him concede two goals at the end. Instead, Jez Finley finds Perea, who makes it two. Doubles our lead. And that makes me feel better about not selling him to Bayern Munich. If he's going to do that all season and score two goals a game like he has done today, he's well worth keeping. Also, nice to see Jez Finley there with the assist as well. One of the young players coming into this team. Uh, Neto into Jez Finley, gets into Martinez quite nicely. who has actually held that CDM line pretty nicely, I must say. Um, he does seem to get in the way of a lot of balls, recycles possession quite well. I'm liking what I'm seeing with him. I like how he's a big presence on the field at six foot two as well. Uh, Nopadon on the ball then. Back to Ari and B. Ari and B brings it forward over the halfway line. And now we've got everyone in the Leicester half. But the ball forward was not particularly good. And with 12 minutes to go in this game, there's still a chance for Leicester to get back in this. And this highlight makes me think it's going to be a big chance for Leicester. We've not done much with our chances, although they've just given it straight back to us. So maybe we're going to go straight back to them. Again, Martinez finds a great ball to Nice, into Pereira, back to Nice, who's got the legs to bring it into the penalty area, but out wide. Can he get a ball into Al Parcel? He does. Al Parcelin's shot is blocked. Jez Finley's there. He sweeps it home into the bottom corner. It's 3-0. And after what looked like a pretty disastrous first half for us, with only the one shot we had in that entire first half, we have come out in this second half and we are proving that winning the Premier League last season was not a fluke because we're beating the second best team in the Premier League last season, 3-0. Absolutely demolishing them on the scoreline. The match stat's actually very, very tight, I must say, uh, in the second half. We have limited Leicester really well. But with just a couple of minutes to go, we do have a slight defensive error, but do retain possession nicely in the end. And now Vasco Sousa can get himself a shot on target, not on target, on goal, over the bar, not on target. But as the players or the, the Leicester players in the second half got more, more and more tired, the midfield changes that we made really did actually spark something. The extra energy we had in the centre of midfield really helped us out today, which is absolutely superb. So I'm feeling very happy about that. If we can just keep this going for the new season... The sky's the limit. You know, we won the Premier League last season. That automatically makes us one of the best teams in Europe, surely. And surely we've got to be thinking a quarter final of the Champions League should be like the minimum. Like, that's my opinion, at least. Quarter finals, the absolute minimum for the Champions League this season. As Arian B steps forward into Al and into Vasco Sousa. And Vasco Sousa, a ball over the top to Pereira. Can he finish off a hat-trick today? He can. He can. 
the man who nearly left for £200 million. I decided in the end to keep him and he's proving his worth. Yes, it's a glorified friendly against Leicester, but he's got three goals against potentially the second best team in the Premier League. What could he do against the 20th best team in the Premier League? Probably not a lot, to be fair, if I'm honest with you, because that's not how football works. But still, it shows he could do it. Also, a trophy. You love to see it. So for me, that was a fantastic start to the season. Like, we have hit the ground running. Hit the ground running completely as we win 4-0 there. Ah, it looks like as well the Olympics have just finished, which is quite nice. Now, Nico Mantle was on the substitutes, but it looks like Portugal won it. Now, if we have a look, yeah, Portugal did win it. Portugal under 23. So congratulations to uh, Kamara for getting a gold medal. Did he actually play though? I don't think so. He's, d he's down here. Can I see his form? Will it tell me? He did play a couple of games actually. Mostly from the bench late on. Although he substituted off at that point. Okay. Maybe he did play quite a big part. Although he didn't play very well. Still, he's got a gold medal and that's something to celebrate. So congratulations, Kamara. Also, Bruce, you and Gladbach keep making bids for Mantle. This one's getting quite big. But on the grounds that we literally cannot find a keeper better than him, I'm not selling him. So Nico Mantle stays at the club. He might get cross about that one though because it sounds like he did want to actually go to Gladbach. But... Valdo has had a work permit agreed, so he is joining the club for, uh, what was it, £10.75 million. Pounds. So we do actually have a backup left back now, which is quite nice. Who is decent, obviously not on the level of Ray and Nori, but it's someone to bring into the team and also someone particularly young. Now, the Champions League group stage draw is the 26th of August, and then it looks like the game starts on the 15th of September. So, I think... We come back for the draw. That's before the Leeds United game. But then we come back a little bit after that to actually play the Champions League games rather than just do the draw and Leeds United. We'll do the draw, ignore Leeds and Brighton probably, and go on to do some Champions League games. So thank you so much for watching today. A great start to the season. Maybe we didn't need to worry about building up this team too much. It's a team that is already superb, so... You can only improve it a little bit at a time. And we have improved it a little bit in that CDM spot. So to be fair, maybe maybe we shouldn't be worrying too much. But I'll keep looking out for more players to bring in as well. So until tomorrow, have a lovely evening. I'll speak to you all soon. Goodbye.